This is a U.S. military test of a conventionally configured ground launch cruise missile. The test took place on San Nicolas Island off the coast of California on Sunday. Such a missile would have been banned under the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, or INF, signed by the U.S. and Russia during the Cold War. But since Washington formally withdrew from the pact earlier this month, tests like these are no longer prohibited. The move has sparked fears of an arms race, Russia says it won't react to provocations, and that the U.S. is to blame. As a reminder, it wasn't Russia that unilaterally withdrew from the INF. Sunday's missile test was the first to be carried out by the Pentagon since the demise of the INF. The landmark 1987 agreement limited the use of nuclear and conventional medium-range missiles. After accusations of treaty violations from both sides, Washington withdrew early August. China has made numerous solemn representations to the U.S. on the sale of the F-16V jets to Taiwan. The U.S. has to bear all the consequences triggered by the sale. It's 8 billion U.S. dollars. It's a lot of money. That's a lot of jobs. And we know they're going to use these F-16s responsibly. The new deal to sell F-16 fighter jets is worth $8 billion. It still needs to be approved by the Senate. If the deal does pass, though, it will be the uh, first sale of F-16s to Taiwan since 1992. Previous Taiwanese requests for the jets were rejected by the Obama administration. Last month, the U.S. State Department approved another arms deal with Taiwan. It includes 108 Abram tanks and more than 200 Stinger missiles. The deal is worth $2.2 billion. Back then, Beijing also accused the U.S. of meddling, saying it would cut ties with every American company involved in selling arms to Taiwan. And this follows days of fighting which saw them firing rockets into government territory. The Syrian government has told its forces, which are backed by Russia, that the battle isn't over yet. The rebels also retreated from the town of Morek, which is in Hama, and it's the site of a Turkish military observation post. Khan Sheikhoun in southern Idlib province is a main population centre. It used to be a place where 100,000 Syrians took shelter before the military escalation began in April. Towns nearby in the northern Hama countryside have fallen to government forces. But for the Syrian government, the big prize was getting control of Khan Sheikhoun. That will give it access to the M5. It's an important economic highway that crosses the country. Zena Khodr has more from Beirut. Khan Sheikhoun is back under the control of the Syrian government. Images released by pro-regime media show the town in southern Idlib empty of residents and fighters. New clues in the urgent search for a pair of firefighters who vanished during a fishing trip off the coast of Florida. Rescuers racing to the spot where some gear was found. Good morning, Robin. That tackle back giving crews a much needed lead. It's also a sign of hope for their families as the search now enters day four. This morning, the search for two missing boaters off the Florida coast intensifying. Overnight, authorities zeroing in on the area where this fishing bag with gloves and gear was recovered about 50 miles off St. Augustine. Ryan McClooney's wife, Stephanie, writing she believes they threw it overboard to say, we are here, come find us. McClooney and close friend Justin Walker both firefighters haven't been heard from since they left on a fishing trip Friday morning. The Coast Guard releasing this surveillance image of the pair, putting their boat into the waters of Port Canaveral. The UN asked Pyongyang to investigate the whereabouts of 30 missing South Koreans believed to be abducted by the regime. According to Voice of America, the UN's working group on enforced or involuntary disappearances recently requested the communist state to check which of them are still alive and find out where they are. Most of the South Koreans were fishermen and crew who were kidnapped at sea in the 1960s and 70s. The working group accepts cases of missing persons from their relatives and civic groups then asks the relevant countries to submit investigation results. The general view is that the Hermit Kingdom submits insufficient info. According to Seoul's Unification Ministry, more than 100,000 South Koreans have been abducted or detained by the regime since the 1950s.
Beneath these shrouds are the faces of men, women, and children. Their families long to see again, long to know what happened to them. Last week, 31 husbands, grandmothers, and daughters were buried in an unmarked grave in the cemetery in Iraq's Karbala province. The Morgan neighboring Babel province gave the bodies to a local charity saying they were unidentified and unclaimed. There is negligence on the part of the government. The government should have announced to the public the existence of these bodies. DNA tests must be conducted to determine their identities so that they can be returned to their rightful relatives. Human rights groups are accusing the government of covering up possible sectarian violence. About 250 bodies have been given to the same charity for burial since 2016. Riots have swept through eastern Indonesia with protesters burning buildings, clashing with police and blocking roads. West Papua's legislative building and a prison were also torched. Now, West Papua and uh, Papua provinces are in Indonesia's east, far east, so to speak. They've been home to a long-running separatist movement against the Indonesian government. Now, Papuans say Indonesia illegally annexed the territory in the 1960s. Those tensions were evident last week, nearly 3,000 kilometers away in Surabaya in central Indonesia. Here, more than 40 Papuan students were allegedly racially abused as police detained them during Indonesia's Independence Day celebrations. This set the stage for the latest protests. President Xi Jinping's last Hong Kong visit was two years ago to mark 20 years since the handover of what was a British colony to China. He minced no words then about who was in control. Any attempt to endanger China's sovereignty and security, challenge the power of central government and the basic law of Hong Kong, or to use Hong Kong to conduct infiltration and sabotage against the mainland, is an act that crossed the red line. But the past 11 weeks of mass protests in Hong Kong seem to cross that red line, the government even calling some of it near terrorism. However, there's been not a single word from Xi himself. Unlike his U.S. counterpart, President Donald Trump, who personally involves himself on topics big and small, including these protests in Hong Kong, President Xi rarely engages on specific issues, focusing more on the big picture. But some say don't confuse the lack of face time as lack of direct involvement on Hong Kong. Now with the parents that are battling to get their four-year-old after losing custody for stopping his chemotherapy and treating his cancer with alternative methods instead. Little boy now living with his grandparents while his mother and father fight for him in court. Paula Ferris is here with that story for us. Good morning, Paula. Good morning, Robin. They want their little boy back. Noah McAdams, he was diagnosed with leukemia earlier this year. The state took him away from his parents why? Because they were seeking alternative treatments. Four-year-old Noah McAdams was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia earlier this year. His parents stopped chemotherapy just days into treatment. He had vicious mood swings, um, making him violent, making him very emotional, 
and he also started to lose his hair right away after the first treatment. The couple then turned to alternative treatments, including medical marijuana and CBD oil, the increasingly popular cannabis extract that's sold over the counter.